Get them fired up and get them to the staging lanes, baby, because Eighth Mile Apparel is now carrying Glowing Bracket Racing merch. Hats, t-shirts, hoodies, and much more can be yours today by visiting EighthMileApparel.com. We appreciate each and every one of you guys supporting the Gorn Bracket Racing YouTube and Facebook. Here we go, man. We're back. Got to see if I remember how to do this, man. March 19th, episode 147 of Going Bracket Racing Live. We're here every Tuesday. Not the last two Tuesdays, so don't trip me up on that a little bit. But we had a lot going on. You can see back there, George streamed a few days of CP's race down there in Louisiana. Did a great job down there. You see he made that new intro, so give him a little uh, information in the chat. Let him know that you like that just as much as I do. Of course, we got to thank the people who make this possible for us to have it free to the viewer every Tuesday, for the most part, at 5 Eastern, 4 Central Time. I'm trying to think of how to do this again, George. I'm out of practice. TSR Racing Products. Go to them for your Power Glides, Turbo 350s, 400s, and 727 transmissions, parts, full transmissions. They'll get you anything you need. BRG 3D printed parts. If you can't find it out there, Brian Garrett can make it up for you. Prints it up off of your dimensions you know how it is with racing race cars and putting them all together i see brian back here in the back screen making Make some faces, faces at, trying to trip me up more than i already am syntax printing out there in temple texas get your stickers shirts brochures anything else that you need for your business call greg over there at syntax printing driven racing oil use the code gbr10 you heard that whenever i was down to eight cars over there at kinson drag strip this weekend gave driven a little bit of a shout out they sell all kinds of petroleum products, and you can get 10% off no matter how much you order with GBR10. Proform Parts, visit Proform Parts for your radiators, carburetors, alternators, starters, distributors, shop tools, and much, much more. ProformParts.com, Crew Chief Pro Software. It's new time of the year. Got cold weather in some places, warm weather in others, new combinations. Crew Chief Pro, get it figured out for you, get it dialed in. Make sure you win some money this year while nobody else has their stuff figured out. And, of course, you want some of these shirts. You want something that George is wearing. You want something I'm wearing. You want to get you one of those new tree chopper shirts. You got a door truck that you think rules and need everybody else to know it. Visit EighthMileApparel.com. You can be a tree chopper like my buddy Brent Alford taking home ten grand over there at Rockingham earlier this year. I couldn't seal the deal, but Brent did. And it's a good time for him because he's got a kid coming. And, George, you know how much those diapers cost, man. That ten grand will go quick. Shoot, I know. I, luckily, I don't have to buy none no more. You know, I might have to change some bed sheets every now and then. My four-year-old, he uh, he sometimes forgets he ain't in the to he ain't at the toilet. You just let it fly right there in the bed. But uh, that's not a problem either. You know, three o'clock in the morning doing laundry or changing out some sheets. It is what it is. But it's uh, it's been a pretty busy week, as you said, a couple of weeks here, Casey. As you said, man, had a lot going on. Looking at doing a whole lot more, man, but uh, I'm not going to waste any time because I know why everybody's uh, kind of joining in. Make sure if you're here already, hit that share button, hit that like button, subscribe if you're over on the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification so you know we're live. I'm going to bring TB, TB Promotions on the, on the screen right now, and uh, let's begin to talk about a little something, something called Verge. Tyler, Brian, welcome to the show. How's it going? what's going on guys uh not a whole lot just working away over here trying to start a new well not start a new series but learn a new series and um you know all the things that come with that so 
Yeah, I see you guys are having a lot of fun in the background, making faces and, and you know, throwing, <laughs> throwing up signs. We trying to talk. We can't, man. Trying to. Try I don't. Do, you know, we, we don't do these things together very often. So yeah, <laughs> I'm new to this whole yeah, deal. Usually I handle this part of it. And he's he's like, what do I do with my hands over here? So. Right. <laughs> right. right. So the, the real reason these guys are so slap happy is they're kind of trying to figure out. Well, just tell us what led up to this, man, because it was a crazy time uh, a little bit earlier this week. And there's a series called Verge, obviously, 470, 450 dragsters, what it's really known for, index racing. And uh, I should say 470 door cars, 450 dragsters, elaborate on that a little bit. But this series always had a huge following. And it's a very big deal, especially in the Midwest area. They have a points program. There's a, I, we interviewed them at PRI. Um, and I think their last race had 75, 470 door cars, 60 dragsters. So it's definitely not lacking for participation, but then it just up and was gone out and out of the blue. And I think the first race was supposed to be, I want to say this weekend or next weekend. So everybody wondered what was going on and was extremely disappointed because of the following. And you guys picked it up and said, Hey, TV's going to run with it. So what's the plan? How, how did this even come about? <laughs> so, so the Verge deal, you know, well, to start with, a lot of the races that that they had were close to us, you know, Bowling Green and, um, you know, a lot of the racetracks were within a few hour drive of us. And a lot of the people that we race with were starting to, you know, not only join the series, but, you know, that was their core place that they raced. And, you know, we we were able to really watch the the growth of it and see, you know, what Mr. Walls had done with it and, you know, where he had taken it. And, um, you know, when it when it did when he made the post that he was, when he was going to leave, um, you know, we were getting calls about, you know, what, what people wanted to do. And, you know, even some of the sponsors, uh, uh, Ronnie Smith with th that kind of does a lot with the junior program with him also helps us out. You know, he was calling us about what we could do for the junior program with the TV stuff. And, you know, Brian and I just talked and thought, you know, what, as if we don't already have enough, why don't we just, you know, see if there's something we can do to just take the whole series because they do have that following and you know it's a lot of guys that we already have as customers but we could also build on it and you know to be honest there's some things that we like that we would like to try um within a race that maybe we don't feel confident doing when we have 450 cars on property and you know being able to experiment with with a few things operation wise that um you know would be much easier to do with 100 150 cars um versus 450 and that's you know, that's nothing against the series because it is it is a great series, but it's just, you know, it's a place for us to experiment and help, you know, build another another product, but also, you know, kind of give us some ideas to use in the future for our other stuff and, and give us another avenue. Yeah, that's it, really round, it really rounds out as far as like what we're trying to achieve as promoters. Um, you know, we do the class racer revival and that's your NHRA class racers. We touch those guys. And then we obviously have our big money bracket stuff that, you know, 50 grander is common these days. So we have 25, 50, 25 at Kill Care and then all the way up to a 250 grander at Martin this year. So we're trying to touch every sportsman racer that's wanting to, you know, experience more than a local Saturday night or Friday night stuff. And this bird series, when it came, you know, so sudden with the post where, you know, it was just announced that they were shutting the doors and it was a simple message to Jeff that said, hey, would you be interested in selling this thing turnkey? And lucky enough, he reached back and wanted to know if we were serious and he thought we would be great people to carry that series that he'd built, you know, on and up, right? So I was texting Tyler and Tyler's texting me and you know, his boss at US 60 and, you know, they're trying to make their own 470 deal, just like Beach Bend was in London and all the, you know, core tracks of the series. They're scrambling to, like, keep these racers a place to race. And that was awesome. You know, that was good news, in my opinion, that these tracks cared so much about keeping that event that they were going to go out on their own. And the problem with that is, though, a lot of times stuff gets segmented, right? You know, Brian Loans had a good article or a good post this week about, you know, how there's so many different aspects of drag racing and different, you know, sections and sanctions and were fragmented like really bad out of all the other mainstream sports that 
TV promotions doesn't necessarily can, you know, I'm not saying we're going to change drag racing, but we can kind of get every group of racer under one banner and take the good and the positive out of all of them and apply it to every, you know, big money class racing and index racing. So, yeah, it, you know, r drag racers as a whole aren't a very large group of people when you look at the grand scheme of things. And, you know, when you go ahead and break it down into 75 different categories, you know, you really, you run out of, you know, you run out of people to use. So, you know, just trying to, you know, bring a little bit of that under, all under one umbrella and and grow it as a whole versus, you know, so many different. Uh, Strength is in numbers, right? Like all of us understand that. And absolutely, man. And these are and quality, I think, these are quality but, racers and quality right. track. So. And I think also you guys deserve credit as well because you're not, you're not newbies. Not only do you guys race, you, you've been running TV promotion sex successfully for the last several years. Um, the Tyler, now you're, you're becoming a track manager. You're going to get more in depth with the actual prep of the track. If you haven't been already, um, obviously 470 door cars are going to be track dependent type thing. Um, you know, a thing that, a lot of people, I, I was talking to George about this a little bit earlier today, and I talked to Rex Simmermaker, Win Light Bets, what's on Brian's shirt right there right now. I was talking to Rex Simmermaker uh, one day about the fact that index racing in specific, not throttle stop style stuff, but actual all out 450, 470 type stuff where no throttle stops are allowed has a lot of spectator value. And there's a little bit of crossover in there because since you put a limit on how fast these cars need to go as far as the index goes, a 470 door car still to anybody, if you turn the boards off, that thing looks like it's blazing down there if you have a small right. track. If it's not a gateway or something, you know, a gateway, yeah, that's not going to look that fast. But if you're at a uh, Bowling Green or something and you see somebody haul down through there, that's that's trucking down through there, uh, like a I-57 style place. Right, right. Um, and a lot of those cars have blowers. Yeah, Pro chargers, make nitrous, a lot of noise. You know, they're fogging up the windshield. Yeah. I mean, that's cool stuff. So right. right. And the success of Street Outlaws and No Prep Kings and all that over the years can kind of provide a crossover value where spectators do want to come in and people like in the southeast where I'm at, a lot of these races bring in a huge crowd because people will bet on the cars and bet on the lanes and they don't need to understand, oh, this guy just went 645 and his time run, he's dialed 657 over here. And this guy, and then they don't understand what's going on. The cars still leave at the same time. It's still most of the time will be a first to the finish line style deal. It's just, it's not a huge wrap your mind around it. It's still pro tree. It's still heads up. And I think that getting fans in the gates and getting them to understand, oh, look, there's a junior dragster over there. Hey, I got my five-year-old kid over here and he's interested in these maybe i want to do that maybe then they end up stepping up over the years um yeah, so the, what are your thoughts on that no you're you're exactly right i mean <laughs> big money bracket or just bracket racing in general <laughs> is pretty much the hardest thing to understand you know under comp eliminator when it comes to drag right. racing so you know it, it's not a fan you know driven deal um it's hard to make them understand but you know this is something that all of us as sportsman racers still love because it's got the you know sports everything that sportsman racing has but it can also be driven towards a fan being that they all have power adders and you know something cool to look at they're going fast so it's cool to watch but it you know it's also not impossible to understand and you know they don't even have to understand it you know it, because they are leaving at the same time the wind light still comes on most of the time for the faster car and you know it's it's not something that they have to sit there and be confused about all day long so it's a way you know it's the perfect you know, what segue for, for fans to get into, you know, the sportsman style of racing. And we're exactly. talking about it and we might as well uh, kind of let the elephant, there's an elephant in the room. You guys do bracket racing, you do heads up racing. Now you do class racing, you do, you do it all right. And are we going to be able to muddy the waters? Because I can see several bracket racers wanting to turn to the verge side of things as well. And this is why, because here in Texas, uh, we, we see a lot of 590 index or 60 index or some of these other index classes similar to what you're doing with verge, just at a slower pace. Are we going to try to blur those lines? Or are you guys going to try to keep it um, pretty much individual series or are you going to blur it? I'd love to see a bracket race embedded within a, within a, within a, a verge race. That'd be pretty neat. 
<laughs> I think they'll kind of blur themselves um, yep. to, to be on. I mean, it's 450 dragsters. I mean, when it comes to big money racing, if you're not going 450s now, it's kind of outside of the average. I would say the average is 450. Right. So, you know, a lot of our big money customers, you know, they, they're going to see this now, you know, more often and, and want to go over and join being that it still pays well. And, you know, they can do that. And I mean, there's a lot of four, 470 door cars that run on the door car side now. And, you know, those guys will be able to, you know, do that. But also the, the Verge guys, you know, most of them come from, you know, the, the bracket right. racing right. side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now once they see what we do as far as running a race, maybe they'll want to jump over and come, you know, support us as a company more. And, and then, you know, maybe venture out to more of the big money stuff if, if they didn't already come from that. You know, like I said, a large number of them did. So they already know. But but I think they'll kind of blur themselves. The, the water will kind of get muddied on its own. And I do. I think that's a good thing to, you know, kind of see all sides of it. And you know, I definitely think there's a crossover like and that's what we hope. Right. Like that's kind of the goal with this whole deal being associated with all these types of racing is to have crossover and pull the best from every, you know, style of racing and i don't think it's going to be a cakewalk for you know your big money bracket racer names um yeah it's 450 index and it's pro tree and who gets there first but you know people throwing out some names but like jeremy jensen's been around the block or two and it's not going wide open to be 450 right uh -huh. you know that uh -huh. thing's accelerating early accelerating late shutting down in the middle timing in timing out um it's yeah, it's not all that it appears you know it looks really cool to fans like we were talking about earlier it's pro tree faster car wins but when you know your acceleration speeding up slowing down multiple times down through there there's more than one way to skin a cat and that's that's really cool it got my attention a lot you know there's you know you never know what the mile an hour is going to be on some of these cars and it's kind of wild to sit back and kind of dig into it it's really neat so got a few um, comments in the chat over yeah. here Got one guy saying, uh, what about a 380 index class? That's Big Al <laughs> Peebler. And you know yeah, him and Blake will come out and run some 380s all day. <laughs> Dude, y'all yeah. do that. I'm definitely watching. <laughs> you want to talk about a couple of guys who, who can can dominate a series when, when they show up to it. They can for sure. So, um, I mean, they're going like 585 when they're dialed 610 yeah, over right. there on the long track. <laughs> yeah. So right. I'm pretty and sure Al's will get her to head on. I'm pretty sure they can really run. run. <laughs> right, right. Now, most of those machines are definitely turned down. But guys, as as we uh, continue going on with the stream here, uh, for everybody watching, leave your questions in the chat, and if we can get them answered, we would definitely do so. I think I seen somebody mention that they'd love to see the Verge series come out to Edgewater. I believe I saw. Yeah, Edgewater. It's Tom and Andlin says he'd hope you guys bring it to Edgewater Sports Park one of these days soon. So, um, you know, guys, and and it leads me to another question. Verge is already established. We've already kind of talked about that just a little bit. As far as for the structure of Verge, which is probably a question you may have the answer for, it may be a work in progress. Are you looking at maybe turning the screws back or turning it up a little bit or leaving it exactly the same? You know you got to go through some trial and error. Everybody should expect that. If you don't, well, expect it now because it's it's just the way things function. So what are your guys' thoughts? You looking at leaving it the same? You got some uh, other ideas? You know, for the that was something that me and him talked about just between the two of us because we always have, you know, a, di a different outlook. That's I think what makes us work well together. I mean, we have cussed each other at least six times in the last four days. So, um, but you know, we always come to an agreement at the end of it. As far as the the structure of it, I mean, payout wise for this year, we're going to leave it all the same. Um, the 450, 470 stuff, it'll still be 10,000 to win, 250 entry fee. Um, you know, the junior, the junior program, um, we are, they were adding a, a 330 foot 450, uh, index series. I've talked to four or five guys that were building cars specifically for that. And, you know, they were up in arms cause they had a brand new car that they couldn't <laughs> do nothing with. Um, you know, and I think that's a cool deal because I want juniors to be as close to the big car format as possible. So, you know, you're going to give them the same index on, you know, half of the racetrack and give them, you know, they're going to be as, as close to what the, you know, the big cars are doing. So we're going to bring that index series on just like they had planned to. Um, and then once again, like I said, keeping the juniors in the same uh, format as the big cars, we are going to uh, change the junior program a little bit. Um, the junior program, 790, 890, 1190, and 1390 
those will be set indexes. So you will not be dialing that. That will be the indexes that we run off of. Um, we still have a lot of details we're working on, but it'll be a, a pro tree race um, that is a bracket race. Um, I'm sure, you know, we will probably, it'll be one of those deals, just like a big money race where you separate them as long as you can or something like that. Um, but in the end, you know, we will be sticking with the index format and the pro tree format and, you know, rolling with it. Um, kind of, you know, like the 450, 470 stuff. So for the most part, it, it's staying the same, but we are tweaking some things to, uh, you know, continue on. And um, we don't want to make a bunch of changes to, to scare people on, on the first year. But, you know, like you said, the change is inevitable. And, you know, we will be seeing what happens and going from there. So we always look to change because unless you change, you're going to stay in the same place forever. So, right. Absolutely. And that's going off that, that junior dragster comment. I've all, I like how you're talking about, yeah, separate them until, until there's one left and let them all fall in. Because one thing I absolutely do not like about how junior dragster programs are run anymore is when I was growing up, obviously, when I was in them, that was they were brand new, so you had to run them all together. But the thing I've never liked is when there's like an 8 to 10 category and then they win their own thing, and then there's a 12 or 13 and they win their own thing. Because the problem is, is like, Obviously, especially as a kid, a 16 year old that's been doing this since they were eight or six or whatever you're allowed to do on that now. Yes, that that driver, there's a reason why you get out of a junior dragster and those kids are already competitive in top ET, super pro, whatever you want to do. Um, but that little kid is never going to get any better racing themselves, especially if their dad is a decent racer and the other kid's dad is not. You know, there's there's no sense in that. It's a learning process. Yeah, I, I did, you know, I raced at Ohio Valley Dragway for, you know, when I was eight to, I ran juniors there pretty much my entire junior career. And, you know, I, I ran 1290s and I got beat like a drum um, by 790 and 890 cars. But, you know, they would separate us until they couldn't anymore. And, you know, that's how you learned. That's how you got better. So there you go, folks. Um, if you want to be Tyler Bohannon, you got to get your teeth kicked in there. Once you do. Once once in a while. But it's all worth it in the end, right? You know, right. it learned. You know, that's how you learn. That's how you get better. I mean, no, it wasn't easy and you got beat a whole lot more than you than you won for sure. But um, I think, you know, for me, you know, this is just my personal opinion. I'm looking for a challenge. So if I win and I shouldn't, it's going to be even more accomplishing. So I think there's, you know, some people are going to look at it like that as well. But, you know, you do have to you do have to be, um, you know, tried and, <clears throat> you know, see what see what happens. So. Um, I think it's the perfect way you're going to run some people who are faster than you. You have an advantage having the clean tree this way, um, but, you know, you're still going to be, you know, racing some older kids and seeing some things you don't always see. So I and, think that's, little... and the goal of this thing was to be able to let the whole family race, right? Sure. Like before, I think they had a 790 index and then they had an all run bracket race. Um, I'm not sure if they kept them separate in the all run bracket or not, um, but it, it felt like it was primarily geared towards the 16, 17, 18 year old kids in the 790 index, which was cool. Um, I know I got personally reached out to by a couple of people that's got younger kids that they want to be able to race also. And I thought if we could pair all these together and then we'll keep them separated until one left, that allows, you know, brothers and sisters and the whole family to race. And we're going to pay a bonus to like the last 1390 cars left standing. We'll get a bonus last 1190 car will get a bonus and i saw somebody in the comments ask well, what if you have one 1390 car well then they'll race with the 1190 cars right they're not they don't have to run the 790 car there you go um we'll call them to the lanes in that form that you know there, there's a lot of details to be ironed out right. but it's not like i mean they're going to be able to get two or three rounds in hopefully of running similar skilled and experienced racers as themselves and then by that time i mean i wouldn't I've seen some of these runs that 1190 juniors are putting down and it's like everything else. It's, it's wild. So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if an 890 car, you know, primarily runs 890 cars all day and then they get a 790 car in a final and lays down 10 total. I mean, it wouldn't shock me one bit. So being able to keep them separated allows the whole family to race, but it's still for a big enough purse that, you know, I know the 790 cars, they want to, you know, them kids are looking at the dollar signs like everybody else. So, um, keeping them all together allows us to pay out a nice purse for these kids and still expose them to, you know, traveling series with quality cars and quality people. Challenges. You know what this is? Uh, 
because we, we were all we we all grew up in kind of the same general area. Uh, what this is starting to remind me of is the National Open at Gateway, where they had the Jake Super Quick series. Also, like as far as just I remember being a kid and going there with my dad, and you have so much different stuff to watch. And with the kids being able to participate in it as well and being able to race. And then you see, like, I mean, for a kid to see a 450 dragster or a 470 door car and just because all those 470 door cars, for the most part, those are like top of the line pro mods from the 90s. You know, like right. though, I was I was just watching something earlier today. I, you know how you run across YouTube will suggest random videos for you. And uh, I saw something in like. I think it was at Greer in like 1997 and you see like Tommy Mooney down there in 1997 going 419 or something at Greer or something like that. I can't remember exactly who it was, but you start seeing all these guys and you're, you remember like as a kid, I mean, first of all, in the 90s, that's flying. But I mean, 470s in a door car, some of these guys go almost 160 mile an hour going 470, you know, yeah, and they're they're. It, it is, you know, they are basically, I mean, you know, they're, they are X pro stock, X pro mod chassis that they're, you know, and they've got 600 inch, 700 inch motors. <laughs> yeah. in, you know, I mean, these, these are, you know, very, very pro mod pro stock style cars. And I do see a comment with the junior program would be pro tree. Um, yep. Yep. It will be a pro tree um, index base, but also uh, uh, handicapped. So 1190 and 790 and, you know, I've I've ran some pro tree bracket style events like that, and I know there's a lot of uh, controversy over that being, you know, hard to hit the tree. But um, you know, the younger kids will get the clean tree, you know. So, but you're still going to have that older kid that you know has more experience and you know should have a little bit more ability to to hit the tree coming from behind. So I think that's kind of the what you call it. It's the, the handicap. Yeah, right? it, it is the handicap. You know, it's it's the it gets everybody back on it on an even playing field. So and ultimately, if they're running bottom bulb essentially anyway in a normal bracket race, is it really any sort of penalty? Because that 790 car is always going to be leaving last anyway. So I mean, it's not it's not any different. It's just you're taking a second away from each side. You're not blinking them down. My my dad, I can remember multiple times racing juniors where I'd start struggling to hit the tree. Yeah, and, stare at the bottom. Stare at the bottom. Stare, stare at the bottom, and he would and, he, and I'd say, Dad, I'm doing it. Dad, I'm doing it. And he would. Wednesday night when I got off school, we'd drive to the racetrack and I would test on a five tenths pro tree so that, you know, he would prove to me that I couldn't be red or that I shouldn't be 50 and, you know, what, whatever it was. But, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I had to go test on a five tenths pro tree so that he could prove to me, you know, that I was doing it wrong. So yep. it's it's it all goes back to, you know, this should be the easiest way to do it for him. So so pro tree five tenths. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and then the big, big, and then the big cars yeah. are on the four tenths. <clears throat> Correct. Very interesting. Very interesting. So uh, keep the questions coming. We see them over here and Tyler and Brian also see them. So you guys keep those questions coming there. I don't think there will be a way for us to miss them with all four of us watching chats across the board here. So there is a question on the YouTube sides talking about buybacks. Is that something you guys are going to implement? I do believe that there were not any buybacks uh, last year or the year before in Verge. Um, you guys looking at buybacks as a as a as a possibility or are we going to leave it the same uh buyback wise so so right now nothing set in stone um big cars 450 470 no buybacks gotcha. you know qualified field nothing's changing on the 450 470 front like we've said a, a bunch on here that there was nothing to change that was kind of I like to touch on that a little bit um jeff and his bunch have done a great job all the racers i've talked to uh sponsors i've talked to tracks i've talked to there's not one thing they would change as far as the 450 470 classes you know the show of the event um everybody likes it the way it is i don't see anything wrong with it i think we can just build on it right, right. we'll get a couple more new faces and some more marketing partners and we're gonna roll i think it's a quality show um the junior side that one is the one that's kind of up in the air i don't think they've ever had a huge following um they've had some good races and not so good races and that's the reason for condensing it into a pro tree bracket race um, on indexes, overall. one class overall. So they're, the argument for that I keep hearing is a lot of these series with juniors, they have multiple races in a day, uh, like Midwest Junior and stuff like that. Um, so they're, they're looking for as many runs down the track as possible. So I believe we are going to implement 
buybacks for the junior dragsters in the all run deal. Um, and that's simply to allow as many runs as possible for these kids to, you know, learn, right? That's what they're doing. That's what junior dragster racing is. Um, and that helps with the purse and ensures that we can make sure we can pay out a nice purse for everyone. So leaning that way right now, yes, for buybacks for junior dragsters. Or what about, uh, I guess it could, it, it could be a similar deal, but what about um, like a second chance race for them? So they're in a totally different deal. So then like, say, say you get a bigger trophy or you pay more to win the real race. And then second chance race is just, you would buy into that one. So it's, so that way it means something to win this big race, you know, because yeah, big isn't is. necessarily massive for a junior dragster competitor. Just the fact that they got this, this type of trophy means a lot to a kid. We were all there at one point. Oh, right. yeah. I, I still got all of that stuff, you know, but yeah. and that's, you know, in the stage that we're in and, and what we're learning, it's all, that's all, you know, possibilities that we got to talk through. I mean, I, I think that's just as good of an idea as, as any of them. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff that of kind of feedback and kind of ideas that, you know, when we're thinking of a hundred things that doesn't come through <laughs> our minds, but, you know, is a good idea to, to now we can write down it and talk about, cause it, you know, just working through that stuff. Yeah. So, so in two places, we have uh, YouTube streaming live, we have Facebook streaming live. And after we answer this question, we'll cut to a quick commercial break. But um, seems to be a lot of folks wondering about the live streaming side of uh, Verge. Looks like Motormania had it covered last year. I see a few asking, will there be any live streaming going on this year? So that's ever working progress right now. Um, it's late in the year. The schedule has changed. Um, I've been, I think I've had four conversations with Mark uh, in the last five days. So <laughs> he's working for me. I'm working for him trying to make this all work. Um, there is some conflicts. I cannot, we cannot guarantee a live stream currently. Um, that's not to say we're not trying our hardest to make that happen because that is important, right? So yeah, I see Casey pointing to George. We're a little, <laughs> we're a little ways from George, oh, but <laughs> we're doing everything in our power to make that happen. And if everything works the way I hope it does, you know, I was on the phone today with three marketing partners, um, new ones and some existing ones. So uh, we're working on that. It's a little bit of logistics, a little bit of marketing dollars, um, trying to make sure we provide the best thing. So we're working on it. We're trying really hard. There you have it. Well, hang in there guys. Thank you all for watching so far as 20 shares several comments you guys keep it going keep hitting that subscribe button we'll return in just a few moments brg motorsports 3d printed racing parts are able to provide you with whatever you desire to enhance your drag racing operation items like safety belt magnets nitrous bottle holder and even quick release delay box mounts are able to be obtained from brg motorsports 3d printer racing parts have a look at top selling items such as helmet hooks and steering wheel hooks, which are proven to make it easier to maneuver throughout your race car. You can contact BRG Motorsports 3D Printed Racing Parts at telephone number 765-729-1177. Unleash your horsepower with Proform Super Street Aluminum Roller Rockers. Utilize the latest cutting edge manufacturing and design processes. The dual contoured body design allows for more rigidity with a greater strength to weight ratio, increasing engine power. Super Street Aluminum Roller Rockers are available for a variety of applications and specs for Chevy, GM, and Ford, including pedestal mount, as well as a Chrysler shaft mount style rockers. On the strip or the street, Proform has you covered. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for hitting that like, share, subscribe, wherever you catch us live on GBR Going Bracket Racing, the YouTube channel, the Facebook page, your podcast form, whatever you're doing there. Special shout out, Ken Jones Performance, Driven Racing Oil, uh, Crew Chief Pro, Team 14 Motorsports, Pro Form Parts, Syntex Printing, BRG Motorsports 3D Printed Parts, uh, TSR Racing Products as well. Eighth Mile Apparel, if you'd like to get some GBR merch, maybe a hat, maybe a shirt, a hoodie, door trucks still rule. It's the best shirt out there, in my opinion, next to the tree chopper. I mean, I do like that one too. But those door trucks, they, 
I think Brian and I both agree that those door trucks will will take your head off pretty quickly there. So uh, uh, also your, the guys over at your ad here, give them a shout if you'd like to be part of Going Bracket Racing's community. I'm telling you, the customer service is better than Jags. I shouldn't have said that, <laughs> but it is. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here with us, and uh, uh, we'll keep the show going. So I got a question. My, my dad rang my phone, so I got to ask this one first. As you guys know, he's got a dragster, and he's got one of those left-hand steer roadsters. So do we have an idea of letting left-hand steer into the Verge 470 index anytime soon? I think that... Uh, this is a question that Brian and I have already talked about. We don't have an answer to it yeah, right now. Yeah, let's um, just preface that. Yeah. We have no idea. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we don't. And I don't know, you know, this is something that, to be honest, I was going to reach out to the few of the guys in the series that I know and just get an opinion from them. And I think Brown's going to do the same. And not that that would drive us to an answer, but just to kind of to gauge it. I mean, I have a brand new one sitting in my shop that I'm building right now um, <laughs> that I would like to find the use for. But, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know, um, you know, I, I don't know what, what the overall opinion of that is. I mean, a 470 series. buggy is pretty cool. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, or either that or slow them up and just make another class uh, of its own. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah, drop yeah. it up to the 510 index and make some people right. go go tuning to get to the uh, to get to that index. <laughs> so there's another class for you. Oh. I know there's enough of those buggies out there to, to probably fill it up, though. So. Anyway, that that was my last question for. So yeah, now I've we get to. I've seen your dad on a wild ride in a four four ninety <laughs> yeah, buggy. Yeah. actually one not, time. So no, it's it was running, good it was running four eighties at that point out at Kill Care. Well, I don't think yeah. it went four eighty yeah. on the pass I'm talking about. <laughs> not, not on this one. <laughs> pretty sure yeah. he was on the brakes pretty good. He's watching. He'll call me in a minute and, and give me the answer, but I'm pretty sure I already yeah. know it. So I mean, it was uh, entertaining. So it's good. I think Definitely. it's good for the fans. <laughs> so Definitely. Now we're gonna get into. Casey's wild and crazy ideas that someone else should implement because I'm not the one in charge. Yeah. So question number one is something I thought of in the middle of this conversation, but if one of these races say happens to be around gateway, obviously that's where pretty much every top sportsman, uh, pro mod pro stock is built in the, in the whole country for the most part. Um, have you thought about doing an outlaw quick gate in in those general areas just for a spectator value, like premier deal at one of these hmm. fit in we, perfect? We we have, and honestly, we were there was a date um, at US sixty that we were trying to trying to get. Um, we actually couldn't get to it because of another four fifty series because we are working with all of those as well, trying to you know keep this moving. But you know we want this to you know we want to drive this towards kind of a show. Um, you know, part of that spectator driven deal. Um, we, we do want to try to implement some of that stuff as one of those experiments that I was talking about and, you know, adding pro mods and, and quick eight stuff like that to the, to this thing is going to make it more of that show. So we definitely, um, we definitely are trying to do that in, in certain places. And just to add to that, it doesn't necessarily have to be one of our classes. Um, right. So hold tight. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. It sounds yeah because well, I uh, like that. <laughs> when I moved out here, obviously, uh, big dog is a thing that's been going on at Piedmont for years and years and years. Like Ricky Smith runs it now that you know oh, well, it's. Yeah. And I've always yeah. wondered why St. Louis never had anything like that, considering all the cars are built there. It makes no sense. It like they should have always had something like that. But this is my final idea, and possibility of like a clash style event because there's so many like out here we have gibbs 470 that a lot of people tr follow around in the north carolina area they have like nine or ten races and have their own point series and things like that how about i mean this is way down the road but if you have a, a series such as gibbs 470 that has a loyal following you could potentially have like you know a like out here, we have North, North versus South for the outlaw guys. You could have something like that as well and just meet halfway in the middle and you bring your top 10 and they bring their top 10 and, you know, something like an all-star race for them. Yes, it's up, it, it went through my head. I know that and I'm sure, I'm sure it did his too. You know, th that's the kind of stuff that, that I think about. And then I go to him and say, how do we make this work financially so that we don't lose? <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, I love that. You know, I'm an NHRA racer. Jugs All-Stars is, you know, something that I've watched and my dad was involved with for, since I was a kid. And, you know, so those style events are super cool to me and I would, you know, love to be able to do something like that in the future if we can make it possible. 
Okay. Absolutely. So that this concludes Casey's crazy ideas for somebody else to implement. <laughs> hey, that uh, wasn't that crazy. And and obviously <laughs> all three of your minds were on the same page. Dog, I thought we was getting ready to get wild there for a second, yeah. Casey, man. You got my I hopes up. Like a tag team thing or something. <laughs> I'm, I'm an like, idea. Right. I'm an idea guy. I'm not a I'm not an implementer. I'm the idea man. So, so uh, another question. Anyway, we can the, talk about what you guys want now. <laughs> another question across the books here, uh, pertaining to Verge tracks is, that you're going to be participating at. Is that staying the same as well? Um, I know you'll probably look at adding a few more, which hey, add as many as you can. In my opinion, so a lot of areas could use a touch of Verge, especially Texas, because we don't have any type. Oh, in my from what I know, 450, 470 classes. I think we have some maybe some some back half classes that are on the 50 index, but I'm not 100 percent sure we got anything for dragsters or those fast. I'm not sure cars. we can get there from here. Yeah, I don't even know. I, well, I do know they have a highway to there. I got <laughs> cross it too many times. But you know, when it comes to the the tracks, so this year obviously we had to make some changes to make it work for Brian and I's schedule. Um, but you know, when Jeffrey sent us all the information, there's a list of tracks that he's talked to about future events that's a mile long. I mean, and they do go from, you know, Northern Ohio to the East Coast to Texas. I mean, they're all over. So we already do have, um, you know, outreach to tracks all over the country to, to you know, expand this. But um, for this year, it's, it's staying pretty similar. Um, the April race at Bowling Green, um, the 20th through the 22nd, staying the same. Uh, for there, from there, uh, June 1st and 2nd will be at US 60. Um, we had already, I know most people are going to think that since I'm involved with them now that that was a change that we kind of uh, strong armed into there. That was a, I talked to them at PRI, um, Jeffrey and everyone that, you know, that was a change we were trying to make happen already. So um, it's just been a little easier to make happen since Brian and I are involved now. So June 1st and 2nd, we'll be going to US 60. Uh, the August event at Bowling Green will stay the same. So August 16 and 17, we'll go back to Bowling Green. The September event at London will stay the same, that 14th and 15th. And then we do have um, an October event. The location, we can we cannot say yet, but it is south of um, south of us, south of Bowling Green. So we do have a, a more southern race coming um, in October. So we, we will release that as soon as possible. But we cannot yet. I think uh, I think it'll make some people happy. So we are adding, adding that. There there was a couple of events, obviously, that um, as you hear that the tracks were going to that we had to get rid of just because of our schedules this year sure. um, and, and working with. I mean, we worked with as in the last five days, we've worked with NHRA. We have worked with <laughs> for their super quick series. I mean, because I mean, know, I, I've spoke on the phone to Will Tharp, Bill Oakley with the super quick series, yeah. um, Rob Winley at Edgewater. Shout out Craig Boone at London. Craig is very Craig's influential yeah. and, you know, big part of how this 470 series and 450 series, um, they do an awesome job have a great core group of racers that, you know, support the Verge series. I spoke to him at Lynx. Um, Brock Porter at Bowling Green is bending over backwards for us. Shout out Brock. Um, it was years trying to get a race in the Bowling Green on the big money side. Right. So now I said, hey, I need three weekends, but I know yeah, you wouldn't give me one for five years, but now I need all three. So thanks. Uh, shout out Brock and their whole staff, um, that whole family. And then, like Tyler said, uh, we've been in contact with other track owners um, a little further south and we'll dangle a little more of a carrot um, other series. So um, trying to finalize that last piece. Soon as we do, it'll be posted up on the Facebook page. You might have to end up blocking us if I get Megan to post everything I wanted to post. So um, that's what we're thinking. Yeah, uh, I do. You know, he he mentioned Craig Boone, and I, as a track operator, and as well as TV promotions, has never had a race at London. But I, I've competed at London and talked to him. There's not. I don't know that there is a track owner in the country that works as hard for the racer and what they want as Craig Boone. So if you have not been to London and you can make that happen, you will not be disappointed. I mean, it, it's, he's one of the best at what he does and, and looks out for each and every one of us. And I mean, he's, he's helped us, you know, with this, but he's also does everything he can for a racer. And I've seen him, you know, work 24 hours straight to make sure that he can get things done. So if you haven't supported London, please do. I know, He's helped us a lot with this and, and I've just I've seen him and what he does and it's incredible. All these are quality tracks too. Yeah. They may not be the biggest facilities, um, you know, London and US 60, but US 60's got 
the right people in there. And then they even got Tyler too. Um, but they're putting a brand new surface down, spending buku of money. Um, and they're go getters. They're there every day of the week. Uh, I know, I don't think either of you have ever been to US 60, uh -uh. but it's not even going to look like the same place. So, hmm. you know, plenty of shutdown, um, wide, wide surface, all concrete, total venue concepts is coming in there and, you know, consulting on the whole thing. So it'll be a quality facility for this series. And it's, it's just growing, you know, um, who knows where it'll be in five or 10 years. So hopefully we're still running the verge then and we haven't killed each other yet. So hopefully... <laughs> It, the future is bright. The future is definitely bright. I see it's a always... question from oh, Morgan. Yeah. Uh, I see a question from Morgan Napier there on. Let me go about. Let me read. Scroll back up here and read it a little like bit. It was a point buy-in. Yeah. Something of a point. Yeah. 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 So, so he's sending that back. Yeah. Jeffrey's okay. handling all that. Um, we are having a point series. Everything's staying the same as far as that goes. Um, details on that are coming out. It's literally been five days, and we're scrambling here. Um. Yeah. Sure. Ask for a little bit of leeway on that. But yeah, any previous dealings with Verge financially, um, Jeffrey's taking care of that or has taken care of. Um, you know, so I'm sure if you haven't got your refund, Jeffrey's working on it right now. Yeah. If he hasn't, or and, something's came up. And info on our the point series that we will be implementing and how that will work. We'll Morgan, as soon as I can get anything out, I'm sure I'll I'm sure your dad will call me and we'll talk about that or you know we'll we'll have information out but you'll definitely get it as ASAP. So awesome. yeah, and I, I assume that uh, you guys obviously have ownership of the website now, so everything will be on the website just like it'll be on Facebook and things as well. Right. Yeah, it's just taking some passwords, emails, domains, you know, registering everything. Um, Jeffrey's bending over backwards. I mean backwards to help us keep this series going. I know how important. This is, I don't know if we've spoken up to that. Um, that man deserves a lot of credit. You know, he started that series, this series, um, around the same time Tyler and I started TV promotions. I've spoke to Jeffrey either through a Facebook message or in person once or twice in my life before this happened. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're brothers now in the last <laughs> week. Um, you know, he's taking care of his kids. My kids run around. We can't hear each other because the kids are wanting to watch Bluey on the TV. So, um, you know, we spent hours talking at night and you know i feel really confident in what we're what we can do with the series and so does he and he is making sure that's going to happen so jeffrey cared about all these racers and all these sponsors as just as we do with our tv promotion stuff so um that goes back to why we didn't change the name we didn't change the logo we just snuck us in there on the bottom and you know we're just moving forward with it and i think we can pick that ball up and keep rolling for everybody awesome what uh, let's talk a little bit also. Um, what's TV promotions that side of things? The big money bracket race side. Uh, what do you got in for 2024? I got well, the schedule. I can pull it up. Yeah, yeah. we uh, <laughs> Bowling Green. Uh, the racers knocked it out of the park again for us this year. Um, everything's filled up. With, he sent me a list of our alternates today. It's a mile long. Um, um, you know, so so we're working through that, but. Uh, just another, you know, year on tap where we're trying to continue to build and um, give an even greater series of big money bracket races for for the customers to attend and be a part of. So, um, you know, Bowling Green's coming up very shortly. And then, you know, we'll go to St. Louis again, looking to continue with that. Um, Martin and Kill Care. Martin's a big one, new one for us. Um, and huge. We, yeah, we're huge. We are. Uh, we're, we're stepping into the batter's box for that one. So look at looking forward to it. Um, we got a flyer sent over to us that we're, we're going through right now and finalizing it's, it's, it's big. And then um, this past weekend, we had two of our giveaway cars getting, getting paint laid on them. And, you know, we got to go pick those up this week. So, and get them back here. So honey Wayne can, can get after it and start slinging wire on them. And, you know, that is, a, is now a full-time, full-time job for, for Brown and I, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that these these two cars right here you know in in five weeks we're going to be giving away one of these cars that that's coming into the shop and um you know it's just it's it's evolving and we know that we can't stop you know we, we don't want to be stagnant we want to keep growing and trying to find ways to get better and that gets harder every year which makes it even more full-time so um we are doing that we're looking forward to it and you know ready to kick it off so. and we're giving away 200 grand in dragsters this year yeah. on warm-ups right. yeah warm-up wow. warm-ups so we, I mean, and they're not, uh, they're not 
type and carbon bodies. Uh, you know, like you just said, two of them are getting cleared right now. Shout out Garrett, Chuck Griffith, uh, Chuck's auto body up there in Alexandria, Kentucky. Yep. I was just there. I don't even know where I was. Um, <laughs> Jerome Settles just flew out this morning. He's been there all weekend. Uh, him and J.P. Schuster nice. laying all the graphics. Um, shout out to Combs boy. Yep, Zach, Zach. Zach Combs Animal. stopped in there to help out. And, uh, yeah, between Chuck, Garrett, J.P., Jerron, Mullis Race Cars, Folk Race Cars, Nick Folk even stepped up for us. Our old buddy Nick, you know, it said it couldn't get painted, said it wouldn't get painted, <laughs> said no shot. You got to have a carbon body. Jerron, no shot. <laughs> All I had to do was tell Jerron that we got to paint it in three weeks. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, that's another cool thing. I mean, the cool part of this is that how many races do you go to where you can pay $200 and run for a dragster period? Right. Um, right. But then you're able to run for a dragster that you don't, that isn't a body and chassis. You know, most guys, when you race for these dragsters, they don't have the money to finish them. This thing is $40,000 closer than any car you're going to race for, especially for 200 bucks. Fact. And the other thing that I just think is cool, um, is that we have guys like J.P. Schuster and Jerron Settles that I got pictures from J.P. Those bodies sat next to each other in the paint booth and they worked on them side by side. And, you know, so J.P. touched Jerron's car, Jerron touched J.P.'s car, and you got a lot of interaction in there. So if you if you like J.P.'s paint work and, you know, there's some things about Jerron's you don't like, now you've, you know, those minds came together and did this. So. And the same thing, Glenn Gordon stopped. Glenn actually delivered yeah. both cars to us here in Indiana because he – lives in the middle of nowhere and he stopped at folks for an evening mm -hmm. spent the night and him and nick you know looked at their cars together and it, it's pretty cool when you sit back and look at you know everybody's competing you know they're we're not the only promoters glenn gordon and mollus is not the only chassis builder mm -hmm. but we can all sit down and have a beer or a drink and kick ideas around and, and it's love. just it's better for everybody you know the yeah. end customer literally spent 200 bucks my uh, my tax guy shout out ron Locke. NHRA D3 Super Street Racer. Hmm. Don't know that he's ever staged up for more than 1200 bucks in his life. Oh. He's showing up on Bowling Green on a Wednesday and could very well win a $50,000 painted, wired, rolling Mullis chassis on a Wednesday. Wow. And that's that's cool, right? Like, It'll I mean, be a super he's comp racer. A bracket racer after that. <laughs> yeah. Try to get him over to the dark side. So. Get him over here to the bracket racing side. <laughs> so, so with so, all so, this... I got, I got a question. Hold on, hold on, Casey, man. Okay. 128 cars were in that 100K shootout at Beach Bend. Or, excuse me, 64 last year. You guys make it to 128? I haven't heard that announcement yet, but I'm just waiting on it. So we, we made 128 last year, um, and, gotcha. we, and we did do that. Um, and I, I told him last week that if we could get to it again, that I had no issues um, um, doing, doing the same thing. We're very close. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think any of the racers disliked the, the way that it went last year with the added payout and stuff. So, um, you know, if we can get to 128, we will. Uh, we are, you know, we've got 64 and then we've got over 50. Uh, I think we're over 50 on the alternate list. So we're close. Um, just need, you know, some more racers if, if, and I, and hopefully we've got some viewers I didn't have last week. So if you are entered or you want to be entered, um, and you're looking at that hundred, hundred K list for the shootout, and you're not sure that you're going to get in, at least let me know that you want to be in it. Because if I can get to 64 alternates, we're going to open it up to 128. So Don't if forget. you're let me know. And it remains 100% payback, and you yes. win the right. same amount of rounds, yes. you get your money back. And don't so, forget the uh, <laughs> the most important part of that entire expansion of adding 128 was most promoters say, okay, we're putting the money on top, but y'all split it all back. Oh, so yeah. everybody was getting more it money. It was 50 to run it up. Yeah, it was 50 yeah. to run it up. Yeah. It doesn't change. You, it's still the same, you know, but at a 64 car field, you win third round, get your money back. It's still third round, get your money back. But from there, it just goes up. You know, instead of from 2,000 to 4,000 or whatever it is, it's going to go, you know, two to 10,000, I think is what we did last year. And, you know, it's, it's just, we took, you know, it's still 100% payout. You still got to win three rounds, get your money back. Just from there, it goes exponentially higher. Right. One more thing on Bowling Green, we've got like 10 no box spots left. Yeah, that's all we do. And there are no doubles allowed on that. So if you want to hit the bottom, we got 10 spots left on that and they're kept separate, completely separate till one left. Wow. So you guys, 
you guys got any time left for yourselves to race this year or what's the plan there? <laughs> Absolutely not. He might have a little bit. I actually had two races on my schedule this year that I wanted to attend. And the first one got chalked up for the Verge series today. So <laughs> I am uh, probably going to chalk the other one up. And and my last race is coming this Friday and Saturday for the year. So he's oh, young. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> shoot. <laughs> So you guys, I mean, thanks for coming on. It was last minute. We hit up. I think we hit a quite a bit, quite a bit of things today, man. And uh, definitely real excited to see what you guys can do with the Verge series. More so excited to watch Verge converge with going bracket racing or bracket racing as a whole. Um, that way we can see some of this heads up stuff and some bracket races and all of that stuff in the same event. That would be awesome to me. Um, and I think others might actually enjoy that as well. You got anybody else to thank before we get off of here? There's there's a ton of I mean there's a ton a of people. Of yeah, with, with TV promotions. I mean, a lot of the companies that have come on with us, and then you know a lot of these Verge guys that uh, a lot of the the marketing partners with Verge that don't know us from Adam and and stuck they're going to stick around with us. Brian's reached out to all of them or most of them, and you know Working on, right? nine, ninety percent of them are sticking around to uh, to stay on board with us. So we appreciate each and every one of them as I guess well. Yes, the number one shout outs Jeffrey Wall. Yeah, yeah, Je <laughs> Jeffrey. I mean in. And not for allowing us to get it, but just no. what he built, man. That was this is yes. good. This right. is really he, good. He sent us a file that he is continuing to work on every day that makes our lives a hundred times easier as we go through this. If we, you know, there is if I got a question, you know, he I don't I go to this email, click on it, and anything I could possibly need to know is is there or getting there. Um, so he's been the MVP of this deal helping us get rolling on this. We thank him. And like I said, all those partners that, that have come on board with us and we appreciate you guys because you guys have a big following and allow us to get on here and, uh, you know, let everybody know what's going on and it makes our phones ring just a little bit less, but also a lot more. So <laughs> <laughs> double edged sword, huh? Well, Hey, Casey, anything in closing? Oh man. Appreciate everybody tuning into the show. Appreciate Brian and Tyler coming on. Like you already said, and, uh, we will be back next week, George, believe oh. it or not. Absolutely. See you guys next Tuesday. Hang in there. Thanks for joining us.